welcome back to the Dymac channel. If you're new to me, thank you very much for clicking on this video. I'm Chris Bilton, I'm a jeweler from the UK. I've got about 24 years full-time experience making bespoke high-end handmade pieces. And I was fortunate enough to be trained up by some very talented people. And I'm here now, I live in Japan now, I've set up my own little workshop and I'm making jewelry making instructional videos to pass on all the information and knowledge I've been taught and have gained through experience over the years and I'm passing it on to you if you're interested in that kind of thing because I'm sure it's going to be useful for many people. Eagle-eyed viewers, regular viewers to the channel may notice that I wear the same clothes quite often. It's because I never go shopping, innit? Right, we're doing another beginner's guide to making jewellery today. So just like my previous upload with the charcoal block, I'm doing one today on buff sticks, an essential tool. I love buff sticks more than your usual normal jeweler. I've got a load of them, all different grades of paper, which I recommend you do. I've actually got four buff sticks here and they all get used quite regularly. Okay, let's have a look at my buff sticks. Right, this one is the one I use most of all. This is good because it's quite smooth, but it's very effective uh, in its ability to actually smooth out metal because basically you're, after you've filed something, you then want to get rid of those file marks. They're quite teethy, so you're scoring lots of lines in your metal. Then you've got to take that metal down a little bit further. Uh, this one feels quite smooth, what is it? Feels like a 600, hang on. I keep my supply like in a folder. Yeah, I think it's that. Yeah, 600. No. Okay, so this one, maybe not to be recommended for jewelry. This was actually just, in the UK, we got this like bright yellow sandpaper. It's really meant for woodwork, I think. Uh, I actually found a roll of it when I was locking my bicycle up one day before I went to work. And some builders or something obviously just left it on the pavement. So I was like, cheers mate, I love that. So I made a buff stick out of it and I actually really like it. It does come off a little bit, it's a bit too papery. Comes off a bit working on metal, but uh, it's quite good. Uh, if you need something a bit coarser than that, if you really, if I used a, quite a coarse file, I would then maybe go to this one on silver or gold. Platinum, I'm a bit nervous because you can, it's very gritty, yeah, so you can get uh, unlucky and have just, if there's just one piece of grit sticking up higher than the rest, you're actually scoring lines in your metal. And platinum is so hard wearing, it's really difficult to get it up to a really bright polish. So you're almost creating more work for yourself by trying to work faster with a rougher bus stick. So I use this, but at the same time, I don't recommend it for jewelers. Uh, this stuff's good, 600, a little bit grittier. Basically the lower the number, the more grit you've got. And I call them buff sticks. Some people call them emery sticks because the paper is emery paper. Uh, gets referred to as wet and dry. You can wet this paper and then use it to take the coarseness out of it a little bit more. Uh, it's good stuff. Um, Emery is uh, a country or an island or something near Greece and that's basically where this stone was uh, discovered, I think. It's a, a corundum stone which is obviously ground up and then glued to paper, sort of waxy, sort of strong paper. Um, which reminds me, I've got a piece of stuff which comes from the company where I bought those rubber wheels from. This was just in my toolbox from the last place I worked. I would love to buy some more of this, but this, this is really, really good paper, but it's on more of a material rather than on paper. So it just lasts forever. Uh, it just doesn't seem to come off. It's really, really good. So I, I think I had this cut off for using in a, in a whizzer, which I haven't done in a long time. So I just got a spare bit of paper, but I believe you can buy this in sheets. You don't have to buy, this was in a roll, that's why it's all curly, uh, like a quite a big, big roll. Um, if you can find this stuff and buy it in a sheet, it's really, really good. Way better than this, but it costs more as well. Um, so I recommend that if you can find that. Next one, this is one I just bought from a trade tool shop in Hatton Garden. It's just buff sticks, you can just buy them. And they're actually really good. It's really nice having these super sharp corners on there. They're a bit sharper and they remain sharp more than your handmade buff sticks. Uh, but they inevitably wear off. This one's coming to the end of its life, I think bit of life left in there. I turn around, I use them upside down, just wherever I can get uh, get a bit more use out of them. But this stick, I would keep it because I like the dimensions of this stick. I'll give you some measurements, I'll show you what I'm working with. So 18 by five, basically. 
This one was just bought from a DIY shop, like it's worn out over the years, it's been in my hand, getting all grubby and rounded. Uh, 20, 20 by five again. Yeah, just, just buy a strip of wood and then a bit of some emery paper. Yeah, same stuff. Length. There's no hard and fast rules about what you can and can't use. That's 21 centimeters. This is 28 centimeters. The ones you buy are 25. I think 25 is good. It's not, this one's po possibly a little bit too long. Uh, this one's possibly a little bit too short. Yeah, I like the length that you buy them at, 25. 25 centimeters, I think is a good length for longevity. You've got a lot of paper there to work with. And, sorry, I'm not showing you anything on camera. Yeah, there's a lot of length there to show you, uh, a lot of length to, to use. So if it wears out a little bit, because inevitably you're gonna be sort of wearing out the same spot with your certain techniques, the way you hold things. But you can turn around this edge, thin edge is always useful as well. Uh, yeah, cool. The last place I worked, they had, uh, oh, maybe I've got it. Let me look in my spare toolbox. Right, that was, that was surprising. Just found loads of bus sticks and like loads of tools I forgot I had. Uh, the one I was thinking of is it kind of like, I, I didn't have it. it was, I used to use it at the last place of work, but I didn't take it. It wasn't mine. It was something they bought and I used to use. Um, the base is a handle and then the paper, it's all coming back to me now. This red paper I was on about, you kind of pull it over the top and then it goes down the other side and then you push a little lever up and then it holds it really tight on there. It was kind of useful, worked as a bus stick, but you don't have that edge. And I used to like using that thinner edge quite often. So it was slightly limited and then it used to come loose a lot. So you're always tightening up the paper. Bit of a pain, but you did get to use this thin roll of um, paper as a buff stick. So it did have its use. Maybe that's why I have this, because this was just like a spare length cut off for it. I don't know. But yeah, th those buff sticks are kind of worth having, but I still prefer the old school ones. Uh, another thing that's come to mind from finding these, this was one of my first buff sticks I ever made when I was an apprentice. Too chunky. I wouldn't use a bit of wood that, that thick now. It, it would work, but it's just not my, my preference. I think it's too chunky. Yeah, it's like 12 mil deep by 25 wide. A bit too much, I think. Um, but what's coming to mind as I look at that, this paper here, emery paper, I swear over like the last two decades, it's just gone down in quality. It's like they find cheaper and cheaper ways to make things. Uh, I can mention a tool supplier as well where their bristle brushes have just gone downhill so much. And then quite often you just use it once and on one job and then it's, it's just gone. Uh, never used to be like that. Tools used to use a long time and definitely this emery paper The paper it's on used to be really strong and they just used to just last like now They just seem to wear out really quick and then the, the paper sort of splits before Before it's really clogged up or anything. So this is the proper old paper Maybe I'll cut this off and then make a new bus stick for myself with this to treat myself with some old-school high-quality emery paper like they used to make um, times we live in and uh, I found this round stick totally totally forgot about this what I used to do I've got this old burnisher yeah it's got a round handle so I used to push this on here if I needed a round buff stick and then can do the inside of rings very rarely do that obviously I forgot I had this but where it's kind of nice if I can find a ring got this ring that never really got finished um, paper whizzy yeah, always use these on the inside of rings but what you're doing is you're scoring lots of little lines that way and your polishing felt say that's my polishing felt uh, you put it on there and then you that's spinning yeah on the polishing motor and you're going round and round it so you're also it's just following those lines along so it's difficult to get uh, scratches marks out of the inside of a ring um, a lot of people don't polish the inside of rings very well at all uh, something I look for because I know it's difficult to get a good finish especially on something a bit heavy and platinum really hard to get a mirror finish inside of rings and a lot of people just don't do it they just accept they're a bit liney inside but if you really look uh, there should be should be mirror finish really it's no no real excuse you just got to try harder which is where uh, a buff stick not using your high-tech micro motor but actually using an old school buff stick on a bit of dowling rod uh, you're going backwards and forwards yeah uh, so you're putting lines that way. So then when you go on the polisher motor, you're spinning it It's spinning that way. It's going the opposite direction for those lines. So it's more likely to buff them out nicer So that's one advantage of using one of these. So even though I'm saying I don't I forgot I had this and uh, 
I don't use it. I do actually recommend having that. I think it's quite useful, especially in a finer grade. So when I'm making jewellery, yeah, I use 600. I think that's a good one to have. I'm sure I used to use 240. I don't know what happened to, to that. Uh, this is just sandpaper. I do a lot of woodwork lately. Um, this is just sandpaper from a pound shop. <laughs> 120. Uh, yeah, I don't recommend using that. It's just yellow stuff. 80, P80. Yeah, I use this on, on metal. Not on platinum, but quite often on silver. It's almost, it's so coarse. It's like a file without the teeth, basically, is how I think of it. Really cuts through the metal, but it doesn't, doesn't last that long. But it's just, just me being... You come up with... You, you, Proceed through making jewellery, you find little techniques and little things that work for you. You do your own little experiments with tools and that, and uh, you just end up with all this stuff. I've uh, got this. Ah, uh, 150. This was the extra rough stuff I was on about. I'm really not up to date with what I've got. Yeah, 150 grade on a buff stick, proper emery paper, made in Switzerland. Uh, yeah. This was good. This was really coarse. I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy some proper, proper paper. So I recommend 150. Have a buff stick for 150. Have a buff stick for 600. Um, and then have a really smooth one. Where's my smooth one? Here. This. You really, really gotta use this if you're working on platinum. Uh, it's a lot of work getting platinum buffed up. Let me show you on this bit of platinum. I've got his platinum shank I'm working on. Like platinum, yeah, it's, I mean, this paper will almost get it polished. Like, that's what you want. You want it almost polished at your bench before you start go to the polisher motor. So if there's any tiny little lines on platinum, it's so difficult to polish out. It's a really hard wearing metal, which is great for longevity of the piece, but it's like, I swear it's like times three the amount of work you've got to do to get platinum polished nicely. And uh, you may notice, I've seen on Instagram recently, like proper est established jewellers showing pictures of their finished jewellery they sh uh, they've made for customers and stuff. There's the polish on it, polish on it is terrible. So this is my 600 grade. All right, let me do this. Filed, yeah. So that's a, a rough filed finish on platinum. From that, I reckon this 600 grade can cut that out. Nice fresh bit there. Buff it up. I'll buff it that way. I should have shown you how to make your buff stick by now, but I haven't. Sorry, I'm waffling on. Uh, okay. So I'm changing the angle at which I'm buffing. Silver, this would have been done by now. Platinum is well hard. Maybe you're not going to be working on platinum if you're a beginner jeweler, but just let you know what you're in for. If you can work on platinum, I actually reckon platinum, you're easier to do a good job making a ring, like soldering, just bending it around. It just seems to behave itself much nicer. And it's very nice to solder with. The solder goes exactly where you want it to, but like fluxing is never an issue because the metal doesn't really oxidize that much, so you can get away with using a little bit of flux. Like nine carat and silver, especially uh, rose gold, it's got high copper content. They're very dirty metals, they, they go black and oxidize loads when you're getting heat on them. So you've got to be really, have the flux, go really over the top of the flux. And the flux has got to be super clean as well. And quite often, especially nine carat, solder will go perfectly. Textbook solder, like saying you're putting a new claw on the side of a collet or something. And then after you come out the acid, you can just pick it off. Like the solder didn't stick properly. It's really frustrating metal to work on sometimes. But unfortunately, if you're working as a jeweler and a sort of high street kind of jeweler's workshop, you're gonna be doing loads of repairs and a lot, a lot of jewelry sold uh, normally just around high streets and stuff is all nine carat. It all comes back for ring sizings and stuff. Claws wear out, you've got to put them back on. Right, yeah, I'm still buffing, by the way, with the 600 grade. Get your loop. Yeah, like, just looking for all my lines going in the same direction. There's nothing hidden going another way. So then I would go to my, where is it? This one. I just want to show you 
what I mean by this grade, almost polishing it. This is 1200 grade paper. I think another sheet I had there was 1500. Kind of samey really, 1200 and 1500. So notice I'm changing the angles of what I'm buffing at. I'm not just going one direction across it. This is why I always recommend polishing your individual pieces in platinum before soldering them together because it's hard to do this. Like if that head was in this shank, very difficult to get all these different angles. And uh, sometimes you just can't, you just, polishing is not as good. If it's all complete before you start polishing it. Try and hit this new angle. This shank's well, well too chunky for my ring, so I'm, I'm happy to buff this up now. So I'm probably going to file it down a lot before completing the ring. Which is one I'm going to make for Etsy. That will no doubt take a very, very long time to sell. I'm planning on doing a video on selling online soon as well. I'm coming up to 100 Etsy sales, so I've got a few things to talk about. All right, basically, I don't want to turn this into a platinum buffing video. That needs more buffing, but can you see how shiny that is? That's the kind of level, well, I mean, that's not enough. I actually would do more on that bit, and then I'd look for a bit of my buff stick that's gone all shiny. You can see it's all impregnated with metal. Those shiny bits, that's just a finishing touch, go over the, go over the metal again. And sometimes it gets all squeaky. It's like, so you're just rubbing metal against metal. Uh, then it's ready for a polish. But yeah, without turning this video into a, a platinum finishing guide, uh, that's kind of the look you want. And then it polishes up even silver as well, like that. Silver is like fast forward. Boom. You don't need this bus stick, it will polish out nicely just from that last one. Boom, there you go, look how shiny that is. But yeah, maybe you could get away with just that one stick. Do a fresh bit that's quite coarse, and then you can go to a worn out bit, just smooth it off a little bit more. That'll, that'll, that'll polish up quite easily in silver. Okay, so now we're going deep into professional jeweler's knowledge. This expands worldwide uh, jeweler's knowledge. I bring it to you here on the Dimat channel. Do you know what these are? Professional jewelers, you've seen these before? Jewelers with decades experience boasting about what you can do. Uh, these are ceramic stickers. You get your buff stick and you stick this on and you can get super smooth, super long lasting uh, buffing abilities with these. Uh, I had one after I left my last workplace. I don't know where it is, so I need to make another one. So I've got these four stickers left. Uh, basically, ceramic paper. You've got to be careful with them. You don't bend them too much. Uh, but yeah, they stick onto a buff stick and then you've got, not emery, you've got ceramic to do your buffing with. And they're really perfect finish on there. So no, like like I said about this one, it's too coarse. Uh, you might have un unlucky and have one little line sticking up. You're actually scoring lines on it. That can happen with the coarser grades paper. Um, it's not gonna happen with the ceramic. There's really nice quality stuff. And as far as I'm aware, never seen them in the UK, never heard anyone mention them. These are from Japan. These are from a trade shop in Osaka. I'm hoping to visit there one day and I'll make a video on it. Uh, it's a really interesting place and loads of like mad things that you've never never seen before in the UK or probably anywhere else in the world. That like jewelers in Japan is their own little world of things that they're doing. So I'm hoping to get some of that in the in the video on the channel in the future. Jesus, just shut up and show us how to make a buff stick. All right, right. The only bit, bits of wood I've got are these sheets of thin plywood because I'm about to make a skateboard deck. Don't really want to use this because I don't want to score lines in it, but I can work gently, you'll be all right. Uh, right, so yeah, I recommend you need a flat surface, a little bit of space, and maybe a, a piece of wood down, or maybe thick cardboard. A cutting mat would be ideal, uh, just basically to save you damaging the surface or blunting your knife. Like this is a stone top table, so I want to put something softer than that down before I make my bus stick on it. So to begin, you will need your sheet of emery paper. They all seem to be this size. Don't know what the measurements are, but they just all seem to be like this. And you buy them in packs or you buy them individually. Uh, wet and dry emery paper, 
buff paper, whatever you want to call it. You can buy it in hardware shops. It's not necessarily a specific jeweler's thing. Uh, it's just uh, just emery paper. Um, so you need that. Uh, your stick that you're going to wrap it around. A knife and some sticky tape. I just had a quick look on YouTube and I didn't see any single video where they did it nicely. They made the buff sticks, but they weren't nice quality. So I'll show you how to do it nicely. Right, so this is way too much paper, yeah, for this kind of dimension buff stick. So what I do is I fold it in half. You don't need loads and loads of paper wrapped around your stick because you're just going to make rounded edges. Fold it that way. And then I fold it back. It's just the way I do it. Push it down nice and hard. Maybe even use your stick to really score a line in that. Should be able to tear this in half now. I suppose you could use scissors or measure it. Not my style. So this is all we're using, it's all we need. So take your stick, yeah. It's ideal that your stick is a bit longer than that distance. So again, what was it? This was the one I had bought in the past. This was 25 centimeters and it's just about right. You've got a bit sticking out the end. So that's gonna be your handle. So what I do is line up one end, have the other end sticking out. Be careful to get it all nice and parallel on the bottom. Not over the edge at all. Preferably just, just under that edge. Keep it nice and straight with your knife. Don't blunt the point. All you've got to do is we're just scoring a line. So I scratch it with the, the sort of top of my knife. Just gently, just the weight of your knife and the fingertips. Uh, lift it up. There you go. Just do that. That's a nice sharp corner now. Didn't push hard. Didn't cut through the paper. So now that sits in there. Should not be sticking up above that corner. Make sure it's tucked in nice and tight. Hold it in position. Again, just with a point, just scratching a line. And then what I do is I move that out of the way. I fold that again, make sure that one's nice and sharp. These first few corners, really important to get them really sharp. Tuck it in really tight. Push it down nicely. See that? Again, score that line. I don't worry about moving it anymore, just those first two. Holding it in position, make sure it's not slipping out of, out of position. Again, score a line. Not too hard, you don't want to cut through the paper. Make sure it's really tight. Now that paper's tight and my corners are sharp. One more. Last one. Okay, that's it. That's as far as I'm gonna go. If you start wrapping it around more, these corners get really kind of rounded and like there's a kind of rounded paddedness to the stick. I think it's nice if you've got a little bit of hardness remaining on it. Remaining on it. This one, I'll score it once and then I'll, I'll cut through it. I know this knife, totally blunt. This is why I'm saying about putting it on wood, doing this job on a bit of wood. Where it worked before, they had like a, a bit of wood with the buff stick, just a sheet of it. Be careful when you pick it up, I turn it over, make sure it's still holding it tight. Sticky tape time. I do a little bit, maybe what's that, like two inches or something. Just get it over the edge, pulling it tight, nice and tight. Reinforce that, I go over the edge a little bit more. Don't go up on the paper too much, you don't need to. Maybe one more bit. This is like pound shop tape, so I'm being a bit gentle with it. If you've got nice quality tape, you can put it really tight. And there you go. That's my buff stick. See how sharp that is? And just look at the quality of this buff stick. <whistles> That's quality. Sharp corners, nice and tight. Hard, not too much tape on the end. Lovely. Eventually, you're gonna tear it, you're finding something a little bit sharp, it's gonna tear and catch off. The paper, yeah, you don't throw it in a bin because it's, it's all impregnated with metal, yeah? So I keep, uh, I've got this like, old jam jar, 
um, yeah, any bits of paper that are worn out and torn off and no good, I throw them in there. And occasionally I'll go in there just to grab a little bit of paper because sometimes you're cleaning up ring mounts and stuff you made. Uh, it's useful for wrapping around needle files and you can work on it. So it's nice to have that at hand because these worn out smoother bits of paper are, are useful again for, for that. So there you go, buff sticks. That's my little thing that comes to mind as I talk about buff sticks. I recommended having three, a 150 grade course, 600 for your medium, and then 1200 for getting things really smooth. Uh, that, that's all you need, I think. Yeah, it's nice to have three, like coarse, medium, and fine. Uh, and then these dimensions are, are quite nice as well. N nothing too chunky, nothing too long. 25 centimeters, and then whatever I said that was at the beginning of the video, dimensions. Uh, you can just buy it in like hardware shops. It's nothing difficult to get hold of. And that's it. So yeah, thank you for watching. I hope that was useful to you. If you're a beginner, welcome to the jewelry trade. Uh, it's, um, it's a nice skill to have. It's like borderline. It's like a kind of enjoyable hobby that crosses over as a proper profession. So it's a nice thing to get involved with. And it's just fun. If you just make things for yourself, you're not trying to make money or anything. It's just a nice sort of meditative thing to concentrate on. It's creative, it's artistic. Uh, you can improving skills, satisfying when you do things that you haven't done before. It's a nice thing to endeavor to learn, I believe. Right, so um, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, if you haven't already, click like and subscribe, and I'll put a link in the description about pa my Patreon account. I've got uh, a couple of new patrons recently. So that's great, they're helping the channel grow. Like recently, I bought some, well, I haven't shown you yet, I bought a, a load of different shape, like synthetic stones, different sizes, different shapes, so I can get some new full instructional guides coming soon. I'm um, just, as I always mention, I'm always battling against time here. But I always feel like I'm about to have time to do more, but it doesn't seem to materialize. But uh, I, I do plan to get some extra full instructional guides coming soon. And I have these new stones to work with. And that the, I bought those with money from the patrons. So it worked out really well uh, recently. I'll put a lit card up on the screen. I did a uh, uh, reviewing a mo moissanite stone. That was also money from patrons, so it's, uh, it seems to be working. Like People contribute to the channel and I can actually create new content with their, with their contributions. So I'm really grateful to everyone who, who does that. Um, there are benefits, you know, I'm not just asking you for money for no reason. Uh, there are benefits other than just be, being able to do stuff with the channel. You get exclusive content, you get your name shouted out on the channel. Uh, there's a few other benefits. You can just become a supporter. You can make just one contribution, uh, like a lifetime pledge of like one pound, whatever whatever you want. You don't have to commit to monthly re, uh, monthly payments, um, just anything anything you want. It'll be greatly and appreciatively, gratefully uh, received. Thank you. So with that, I'll stop waffling on. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you subscribe and check out my other videos and stay tuned for more coming in the near future. See you. Bye.